Friends, praise the Lord. We thank God for every opportunity. Now, we continue by saying there are moments, there are times when God works behind the curtains. He doesn't, there are moments when he will just use situations. You look at a situation and then you know that God is working through this situation. And here is the name of the woman Esther as we continue with the story. Because it is in this book that we find that you read through it from chapter 1 to the end, you not find the name of God mentioned anywhere. But you see what was being done. God was the one who was orchestrating these activities. He was actually working them out. And someone who reads this book of Esther with an eye of faith will know that God worked miraculously worked wonderfully for the people of, of Israel. And so this time I share with you still on the book of Esther, a book that, uh, that has challenged my faith, a book that has challenged my piety, being pious, the righteousness, the book that has challenged my, you know, my standing in the faith. And you know, the woman, the young lady, an orphan from an obscure background comes out and God uses her that the salvation of his people was able to come. Now, one lesson that I pick hugely from this book is that God is always working, sometimes in obscure ways and sometimes in unseen ways. And Esther boosts us with this kind of uh, thing and this is something that we need because in, in, during our times we ask so many questions situations happen but until you have the eye of faith that's when you, you you'll be able to see if you don't have then you'll ask questions that's why people deviate and ask questions where is god where is god in this where is god in this now every situation be it negative or positive with a spiritual eye, you see God's eye, God's hand prevailing in it. And so God always works in ways and in own. And so the word of God does mention that very, 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 very clearly. God's name is not mentioned here, but he works, he has worked out very, very much. So sometimes things may look bleak. Things may not look clear. But remember, God is in control. Situations can come, but God wins. God directs our situations behind the scenes. He moves us. He energizes us. He encourages us. You know, you, you wonder where the faith, you wonder where the courage comes from when you are facing a certain situation. Of course, we may not be able to see God with a physical eye that here is God. Of course, the Bible does mention that there is only one person, Moses, who was able to, who attempted to see when God permitted it. But this is very, very important that in our situations, be it positive or negative, may we have a spiritual eye to see God working in our midst. And to this we say, Amen, because he is ever with us. We know that. And his name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means Iman with us is God, El. And so we pray that God who is Emmanuel, be with us, be with you in situations, whether clear or not clear, whether you are, whether it is evident that God is with you or not, now, whether positive or negative situation, may God help you to see his hand working through you or through another person to bring salvation to another person. Now, one other thing that actually we discover in the book of Esther is that God's providence comes clear. He works favorably through people's circumstances. And this I thank God that I'm learning it, that I have always, you know, looked back and said, yes, God sometimes, in many, many, many cases, works through people's circumstances. And in this book, he used the negativity, he used the negative circumstances that this lady, this young lady was in, being an orphan, you remember? As we've already mentioned, her parents died when she was at an early age. She was orphaned. And this actually goes out to people that, you know, that may think that it is all done, it's all gone when your parents have died, maybe younger, when you are younger. But may God raise up men and women who are like Mordecai to look after the orphaned people. It's a huge lesson, friends. 
that actually when God puts in a position to help another person, the orphaned, especially those that have lost their fathers, their mothers, when they're still small. The book of Esther is bringing us a huge lesson, and it's the reason why I had to speak it again today, that this is a very, very important lesson, that she was orphaned when at an early age, but her cousin took up and he became a mentor in her life. So God is always there to help in our circumstances. So don't lose heart in case you are in any situation. May God raise up someone. And my prayer always is that as I get out, may God raise up someone who will stand with me or will stand with another person in any situation that is. And so may God raise up people in our nation. May God raise up people during our generation that actually people that will be looking after people that have challenges, people that have problems, the orphaned, you know, the, 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 the motherless, the fatherless, you know, the widows, the widowers. God answer our prayer because these are the challenges that we meet in life. And Esther, as an orphaned young person, but found favor before Mordecai, her brother, her cousin, and life was, um, was bearable and she was able to rise up to the ladder of being a queen in the kingdom of Persia. And so God used you, my brother, my sister, in order to help some other person. And remember what Miriam did to her brother? She, st she stood at a distance to see what would happen. A caring eye, a caring look. And so I pray for you, and I pray for myself, and I pray for another person that God will raise up many Mordecais in our society today to look after the orphaned, to look after the disadvantaged people in our society. And may God bless us. And one other lesson as I wind up is through Esther we see God uses any kind of person. Now this was a, we, we was an orphan. And God used her. Any kind of person. He can use you, he can use me. And you see, we, during that time it was a male-dominated uh, society. But God used even women. Any person God can use. But do you remember a widow, I mean a, um, a prostitute, during the deliverance uh, of, the, of the race of the Jews from Egypt to Canaan at Jericho? A prostitute called Rahab. Can you imagine God using that one to hide the spies that had gone? And actually Rahab is mentioned. So God can use another person. So I, for me, when you hear someone talking about you know, God's words, God's things, and they could, they could be prostitutes, they could be former thieves, they could be former, you know, bad people. So God can use anyone. And Esther here, um, a young, an orphan, God used her. So are you willing and ready to be used of God? Are you willing and ready to be used of God in your circumstances? Because God uses any person. Will you be one of them? It's a question that I'm leaving with you. And so God uses us very, very much. Now, one other thing that actually uh, that we find is that people look at other people that mistreat others, and they think that it has just started. You know, Haman, the, the prime minister, you see what she did? You know, he wanted to annihilate, to destroy all the Jews. And so the world is full of people who are like Haman spirit. And so Haman against the Mordecai and the Jews, but God about this. And so we pray that if there's anyone who is against you, if there's an institution that is against you, may God about it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so that actually remain serving God's people, and this is something very, very important. And also, uh, one other thing that actually God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And so be in the presence of the Lord before facing any challenge. And I just want to leave with you these verses. Before facing any challenge, be in the presence of the Lord. And Esther does ask the people there to pray for her, that you pray for me. And this is in um, um, chapter 4, verse, uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. And the Bible says that then Esther told them, to in reply, to reply to Malachi, go and assemble all the Jews who are in, who are found in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and myself and my maidens also will fast in the same way, and thus I will go in, I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. What a resolute! And we talked about Esther being a resolute person. And so Mordecai went away and did just as Esther had commanded him. Pray the Lord, pray the Lord, pray the Lord indeed. That actually this is something that actually we need to pick, that this woman uh, was so resolute and she asked them to pray for her and she was able to, and not just, some people said, I pray for me. Now, don't just ask people to pray for you. Pray, may they pray with you. 
Now, Esther asked them to fast and pray for her. But she also said that I and my maidens who shall also fast. So as you ask me to pray for you, or as I ask you to pray, uh, to pray for me, may it be a combined prayer. Don't just ask someone to pray for you, but ask someone to pray with you. Make a prayer also. I trust God for you, the situation that you are in. And finally, your origin will not matter before God. God can use anyone. Can use, I look at myself, my origin, and I believe and I trust God. And you also, if you have your origin, you will not know that God has brought you from very far. And so God can use you to do greater things in this generation. So Esther was a humble girl, was humble and she was able to, to meet the standards of the nation. But I don't want to forget Mordecai's statement to Esther in chapter 4 verse 13. And this is something that actually um, I just want to leave you with. That Esther leaves Mordecai. Mordecai gives Esther a statement here in chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. You see, God puts us in places and we need to maximize our position. Now here, Mordecai said, told them to reply to Esther. Do not imagine that you are in the king's palace. You, are, you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. Because she was in the king's palace and there were plans to annihilate it to death with the Jews. But in verse 14, for if you remain silent in this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained the royalty for such a time as this. Praise the Lord. God, can, God, God may be putting you in a position where you are for the salvation of his people. And so be mindful that our positions that we hold, you may be in that shop, you may be in that position, you may be in that whatever it is that God may use it to save another person. And so Esther was told, who knows, that God has elevated you to that position for the salvation of his people. Now, are you a husband? Are you a wife? Are you a worker? Are you a who? Now, may God use us to bring salvation to other people. And Esther leaves us a lesson. Now, continue reading this book. And may God bless you as you find more lessons that we shall remain resolute to remain worshiping God and serving God for the salvation of God's people around us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <music>